Thank you, Madam Speaker. I thank the gentleman for yielding, and I thank him for his leadership year in, year out uh, to clarify what our mission is, uh, to make sure uh, that we honor our troops, and honor them means not having them stay in harm's way any longer than is necessary for our national security. Uh, Madam Speaker, I rise today in opposition to this rule, and I do so with some level of sadness because when we're talking about the defense of our country and the oath we take to protect and defend the Constitution, I would have hoped under, the, under this bill uh, we could have had on the floor the appropriate discussion of what is happening uh, in Afghanistan. I rise today just having returned uh, with a bipartisan, all-women congressional delegation to Afghanistan. It's our traditional Mother's Day visit to our troops wherever they are in, in um, combat. And this uh, year in and year out, we've uh, recently been going to Afghanistan, Iraq before that. The purpose of the trip for this time was to have conversation with the, certainly the President of Afghanistan, President Karzai, as the first uh, delegate, congressional delegation into Afghanistan following the signing of the strategic partnership agreement between uh, President Obama and President Karzai. Uh, but our main purpose of the trip was to visit our troops, to thank them for their service and their sacrifice to keep America's families safe on Mother's Day and on every day in the year. Further purpose was to thank, in particular, our women who were in service there, our mothers in combat, and believe it or not, our grandmothers uh, who are in, 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 the, uh, in the war zone. We met a mom who had the baby 16 weeks old. I had the uh, uh, honor of pinning a ribbon on a, a newly, uh, newly appointed uh, captain, a woman captain of six children, four to 14, at home in the 10th year of her one year, 10th month of her one year deployment in Afghanistan. Our women uh, in the military serve our country very well. Uh, they strengthen our national security, and we are grateful to them and their families, and we are grateful to all of our men and women in uniform. They are the 1% that we should care the most about and focus on. You hear a great deal about the 99% and the 1%. Well, this 1% is less than 1% of our men and women in uniform, and a little higher than that uh, when they come home. And what we say in the military is on the battlefield, we leave no soldier behind. And when they come home, we have no veteran, leave no veteran behind. And we'll be meeting with our veteran service organizations today as this bill is being debated. So I wish that the rule would have allowed for the consideration of the McGovern Amendment. I was surprised, frankly, and I'm rarely surprised around here, but I was surprised that that discussion could not take place on this floor in the form of approving that amendment uh, because it is uh, uh, in furtherance of, of what has happened in the strategic partnership. I can tell you this on the basis of our trip, and we have to be careful when we return uh, congressional delegations from a trip that we don't read too much into our own observations. But what we did here that was different from before, going every year, is that our troops uh, leadership is fabulous. General Allen is so great, and the other generals and commanders who serve with him. They are preparing for the timetable spelled out in the President's Strategic Partnership Agreement, signed by the uh, that at the, on the civilian front and what we are doing with USAID and our, our uh, Americans who are serving there, as well as uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the coalition forces and friends who are helping in Afghanistan are working along the path of this uh, strategic partnership and then the civilian part to go beyond that. So really, uh, I've come home more encouraged than ever that it is possible for us to accomplish our mission, which is the protection of the American people, to do so in a way uh, that has a, a, a that comes to an end uh, it's never over as long as our protection of the American people is an endless commitment, but at least the commitment of that many troops on the ground in that country is one that we can say that soon we will bring our troops home safely, and that hopefully will be soon. So the timetable that Mr. McGovern has in his amendment is in sync with what that partnership is. 
There's other language in the bill, frankly, that I think confuses the issue, and that's why the clarity of debate would have been helpful. I am glad that the uh, amendment by uh, Mr. Smith, the ranking member, that is bipartisan amendment, will be able to come to, to the floor, which addresses uh, the detention issue, and, and uh, we'll have a fuller discussion of that when that amendment comes to the floor. But to recall, President Obama, when he signed last year's bill, did a signing um, statement that said he would not uh, uh, enforce that part of the bill. Hopefully today we can remove that part from the bill uh, because it, it flies in the face of our commitment to protect the American people and to have the proper balance between security and liberty and freedom, and uh, that is our responsibility. So I, I urge my colleagues to vote no on the rule, uh, to vote no on the moving the previous question unless we can take up uh, the Gov McGovern Amendment and again salute the President for the strategic partnership agreement, but most of all support our men and women in uniform and their families for their service, their sacrifice, and their patriotism for our country. And Madam Speaker, I yield back. Thank you. Gentleman from Utah. Reserved. Reserved. Gentleman from Massachusetts.